Chapter 12, Section 3, RNA and Protein Synthesis. The double helix structure explains how DNA can be copied, but it does not explain how a gene works. In molecular terms, genes are coded DNA instructions that control the production of proteins within a cell. The first step in decoding these genetic messages is to copy part of the nucleotide sequence from DNA into RNA, or ribonucleic acid. These RNA molecules contain coded information for making proteins. The structure of RNA. RNA, like DNA, consists of a long chain of nucleotides. As you may recall, <clears throat> each nucleotide is made up of a 5-carbon sugar, a phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base. There are three main differences between RNA and DNA. The sugar in RNA is ribose instead of deoxyribose. RNA is generally single-stranded, and RNA contains uracil in place of thymine. You can think of RNA molecules as a disposable copy of a segment of DNA. In many cases, an RNA molecule is a working copy of a single gene. The ability to copy a single DNA sequence into RNA makes it possible for a single gene to produce hundreds or even thousands of RNA molecules. Types of RNA. RNA molecules have many functions, but in the majority of cells, most RNA molecules are involved in just one job. Protein synthesis. The assembly of amino acids into proteins is controlled by RNA. There are three main types of RNA, messenger RNA, ribosomal RNA, and transfer RNA. The structures of these molecules are shown in figure 12-12. Most genes contain instructions for assembling amino acids into proteins. The RNA molecules that carry copies of these instructions are known as messenger RNA or mRNA. Because they serve as messengers from DNA to the rest of the cell. Proteins are assembled on ribosomes shown in figure 12-13. Ribosomes are made up of several dozen proteins as well as a form of RNA known as ribosomal RNA. During the construction of a protein, a third type of RNA molecule transfers each amino acid to the ribosome as it is specified by coded messages in the mRNA. These RNA molecules are known as transfer RNA. Transcription RNA molecules are produced by copying part of the nucleotide sequence of DNA into a complementary sequence in RNA, a process called transcription. Transcription requires an enzyme known as RNA polymerase that is similar to DNA polymerase. During transcription, RNA polymerase binds to DNA and separates the DNA strands. RNA polymerase then uses one strand of DNA as a template from which nucleotides are assembled into a strand of RNA. The process of transcription is shown in figure 12-14. How does RNA polymerase know where to start and stop making an RNA copy of DNA? The answer to this question begins with the observation that RNA polymerase doesn't bind to DNA just anywhere. 
the enzyme will bind only to regions of DNA known as promoters, which have specific base sequences. In effect, promoters are signals in DNA that indicate to the enzyme where to bind to make RNA. Similar signals in DNA cause transcription to stop when the new RNA molecule is completed. RNA editing. Like a writer's first draft, many RNA molecules require a bit of editing before they are ready to go into action. Remember that an RNA molecule is produced by copying DNA. Surprisingly, the DNA of eukaryotic genes contains sequences of nucleotides called introns that are not involved in coding for proteins. The DNA sequences that, the code for, that code for proteins are called exons because they are expressed in the synthesis of proteins. When RNA molecules are formed, both the introns and the exons are copied from the DNA. However, the introns are cut out of the RNA molecules while they are still in the nucleus. The remaining exons are then spliced back together to form the final mRNA as shown in figure 12-15. Why do cells use energy to make a larger RNA molecule and then throw parts of it away? That's a good question. And biologists still do not have a complete answer to it. Some RNA molecules may be cut and spliced in different ways in different tissues, making it possible for a single gene to produce several different forms of RNA. Introns and exons may also play a role in evolution. This would make it possible for very small changes in DNA sequences to have dramatic effects in gene expression.